Welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number 11. I'm your host, Bo Bullock. On this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about how to go about discovering sensitive data that's being sent back and forth between employees at an organization via email. Um, now, email is absolutely still the most dominant communication platform out there. Yes, you still have employees that pick up the phone, they make phone calls to one another if they need to communicate. You, you have some organizations that utilize chat services um, internal to the organization where they can just uh, communicate via via chat, um, but email still is the most dominant across the board at most of the organizations that um, that at least I've I've been assessing. Um, so uh, the interesting thing about email is that a lot of employees don't really uh, they're not they're not as security conscious about what they're sending back and forth via email, um, especially internal to an organization. They think that, oh, because I'm sending an email from one internal email to another internal email account, that that's just secure by default. Um, obviously, they're not, a lot of people aren't using PGP. Um, you know, they're not encrypting emails back and forth inside of an organization for the most part. So the content typically tends to be a lot more lax. You find, you know, credentials that are being sent back and forth. You find business information, um, you know, process and uh, payroll flows. Uh, you know, you, you typically find a lot of interesting things that are being sent back and forth via email that might uh, either either allow an attacker to discover where the sensitive data is on the network somewhere, or the sensitive data sensitive data they're looking for it might just be in the email itself. Uh, you know, we found credit card numbers in emails before. Um, so uh, let's talk about how we go about looking for that. Um, and, and another reason, let me let me back up a second because before we talk about why or how we're going to go about looking about lo looking for it, let's talk about why we need to look for it. Um, on pretty much every assessment um, that I have been a part of, that a lot of pen testers that I work with have been a part of, um, a lot of pen testers that I've talked with um, and and just networked with, they all seem to come to this consensus that it's not hard to elevate privileges in an environment to get domain admin. Domain admin. Um, so, you know, with that fact in mind, um, knowing that if, if an attacker gets into your network, um, it's not going to be too hard for them to escalate. Now, as pen testers, we know that it's not going to be hard to, for us to escalate in most environments. Um, so whenever we do escalate, that cannot be the end goal. That cannot be the end game. We can't just say, oh, we're domain admin now. We won. That's it. Report. Here you go, fix this. Um, for most organizations, for that to even matter is you have to actually show them the risk. What what does that even mean that you got domain admin? So um, one of the ways you can do that is show actual compromise of sensitive data on a network or something that they feel are their crown jewels of that network. Um, so you know, there's a number of other tools to, to look for sensitive data on the network, like there's um, PowerView, uh, ShareFinder, and FileFinder from, from HarmJoy that you can go look at all the shares on the network, look look at the file names for sensitive data. Um, and then, you know, for this tool, MailSniper, you can go through the email and do kind of a sim similar thing um, if they have an Exchange environment. So basically what it, what it does is it connects to Exchange um, and will search for various things, various terms that you can specify. By default, it search for, searches for uh, password, creds, and credentials. Um, it is a PowerShell tool. Um, you can go get it it's from GitHub. Um, so, oh yeah, and, and another thing too to keep in mind about this is that in some cases it can be run remotely uh, across the internet against um, various OA and Exchange Web Services servers as well. So let's say you have a target mail server for an organization that's on the internet somewhere um, and you're remote. If you have a credential, you can actually use this tool to search um, a specific user's email as well. So um, let's talk about just searching one email box first. Um, so there's a there's a function in MailSniper called invoke self search. So invoke self search basically just does what it says. It searches the single mailbox of the user you specify. Um, you can uh, pass it a number of different terms uh, to look for. Uh, by default, it just searches the inbox. You can change that up with the dash mailbox or uh, I'm sorry the dash folder option um, if you wanted to search multiple different folders. Um, but it does uh, it it could pr pr prove to be an interesting privilege escalation vector too if you do have access to uh, somebody's account on a network. So let's say that you got a shell um, via phishing on a network. You now have um, this, this person's credentials via, let's say, Mimikatz or something. You connect to, uh, actually, you wouldn't even need the credentials if you're on the network. If you have a shell as this person and you're running a command terminal as this user, you can just run MailSniper to connect to, uh, to the Exchange server as the current user not even needing their credentials, and you can search their email um, with with Mail Sniper. So you know you could potentially use it to look for passwords to other systems if if maybe they've communicated about passwords in the past. 
Um, so, you know, and then again, remotely, like let's say they have maybe two factor set up on a portal somewhere. Um, you might be able to use this to, you know, like reset the, reset the two factor cred and then use this tool to go and then read uh, the email that was sent um, to like for them to, for them to click and like, you know, say, yes, I did, I did add a new two factor uh, token here. Um, searching all mailboxes. So this is this is the the function in Mail Sniper that basically allows it to go out and, and search everyone's mailbox for a domain. Um, so the interesting thing about this is that it does uh, allow you to basically search an entire organization for sensitive data in everyone's email. Um, so this is called the Invoke Global Mail Search function. Um, you can use regexes with this as well. So uh, if you wanted to search for something like credit card numbers, uh, you could do that. Um, you can search an entire organization for terms like SCADA, ICS, databases, um, that kind of thing. So like if, if you don't know, like let's say you're on a massive organization and you don't know where like the sensitive pieces of the network are. Like let's say you don't know where maybe like the SCADA infrastructure is or the ICS infrastructure or whatever you, you think might be of value to that customer. You can use this to, to find conversations where people are talking about that. All right, let's go to the Mail Sniper demo. Okay, so I've got a Windows box here on a domain. Um, let's go ahead and run PowerShell. .xe-exec bypass. Um, we're going to import the module, mail sniper. Um, and then let's go ahead and first off, just search the current user's mailbox. Uh, that's gonna be invoke self-search. Um, you need to pass it to the mailbox, the actual, so this is gonna be the actual email address of the user. Um, in our case is Juno Eclipse at uh, galacticempireinc.com. We need to pass it an exchange server to connect to. Um, in my case, it's gonna be mail.galacticempireinc.com. We're gonna give it the dash remote parameter. So um, dash remote, basically, if you don't include that, that will attempt to connect to the exchange server using the current user's credentials from the command terminal that I was mentioning earlier. If you do pass the dash remote, it will pop up a little box asking for creds. Um, and then we're gonna output it to a CSV for like test emails.csv. Okay, so it's connecting to Exchange, it's asking for creds. Let's go ahead and give it the creds of our user. And now it should go search the mail server. And look, we got four hits here. Um, so by default, it just kind of pops up, uh, just like lists out a few of the mails on the screen, um, which doesn't actually give you a whole lot of detail, but it, when you do output it, you do get the full contents of the emails. So um, we can see here, we've got the sender, Darth Vader. We've got, you know, receiver, Juno Eclipse. We've got the subject. Uh, Death Star SCADA creds, and the content says, here are your new credentials to the Empire's ICS systems. Uh, you know, username, J Eclipse, password, DarkSide2017, exclamation point. Um, so, you know, obviously, like, I did, I did, you know, set this up myself, so, um, but, I mean, you know, like, this is definitely something that we have seen very similar stuff to this exact thing in the real world. All right, so next up, let's demo the Invoke Global Search. Now, this is the, the module you would basically want to run after you've escalated to domain admin because you do need a, uh, an actual exchange administrator, um, which a lot of times, you know, organizations put domain admins in the organization management group, which by default is uh, a manager of exchange. Um, but you do need somebody who's either in the exchange admins or the organization management group. Um, so we first have to give it an impersonation account. The impersona impersonation account is the current uh, account that the command terminal is running as. So um, we're gonna give it J Eclipse, that's who we're running as. Um, we need to give it the uh, uh, the exchange host name again. So in this case, I'm gonna give it deathstar-mail.corp.empire.com. Um, and then we need to output that to CSV again. So let's give that one global mail test.csv. All right, in this case, this is gonna be the credential of the exchange administrator that we have. In our case, we've escalated, we've cracked a bunch of passwords, we've cracked Dvader's password, or we got it via Mimikatz or some other mechanism. Um, and now we can now connect to exchange and search everyone's mailbox in the entire organization. So let me go ahead and type in his password. And now it should uh, go ahead and connect to Exchange, give the current user, J Eclipse, the impersonation, um, application impersonation right, and now it should go through everybody's email um, and search for those specific terms. Now again, you can do, there's a lot of different options here. You can give it, uh, you know, regexes to search for, you can give it different terms to search for, um, 
But again, it's going to output it to a nice CSV for us that we can go search for, uh, you know, like let's say we wanted to just search this for password, we could. Um, you could throw this in like an Excel spreadsheet maybe um, to look through it. But either way, you have the content of emails that contain the terms you're looking for. Um, so again, there, there you go. That's, that's another way to go about finding sensitive data on a network. So now when it comes to Office 365, um, you have Invoke Self Search that you can use to search the current user's mailbox. Um, currently, the global mail search uh, module doesn't work against O365, but there is another way. Um, so uh, Advar Mo actually posted a really awesome blog post whenever I released Mail Sniper detailing this compliance search functionality of Office 365. So in Office 365, there's basically a built-in function to do exactly what this does. So it searches for terms um, and provides a report. Um, another cool thing about this is that you, uh, you can also search SharePoint. Um, through Office 365 as well, compliance search. So you do have to have uh, an admin, a global admin of Office 365 to do this. Um, so you'd have to, again, crack a password or get that user's password through some other means um, and then connect to the Office 365 portal. But uh, check out this, the blog post I have a link to here um, uh, from Advar Mo and, and check that out if you have an Office 365 environment and want to do the same thing. That is it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. For the blue team, search your organization for emails where people are just being very lax about uh, sharing sensitive information over email. Um, you might find some very interesting things that you don't want your users just sending back and forth inside an organization that an attacker, once they escalate, could find pretty easily. Um, and then, you know, if you have an O365 environment, check out the compliance search. You can get Mail Sniper from, uh, from GitHub. I got a link there. And uh, check out that blog post from Oddvar. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Daptac. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.